let's go creating the tool pass and simulating it and figure out how we're going to fixture this part, folks. So we left off with this machine and the part in position. So let's just go to from model and choose cam. And let's go back and actually hide the machine. We don't need to see that. We just want our part. Cam. One of the things I learned in the Fusion 360 class that I took at the Tormach Open House, which was great. It was great to meet people from Autodesk. It was great to see how many other people are interested in Fusion 360 because folks, and I, a lot of people ask, what's your deal with CAM? Spruit CAM, SolidWorks with HSM, Fusion. Fusion is such a good value. That's the thing. And I would rather publish tutorials that are going to be able to help the masses. The folks out there that can write $5,000 or $10,000 checks for CAD, I like helping them too, but I would rather have everyone be able to do it. And Fusion is so affordable. It's free for folks that are hobbyists or I think earn less than $100,000 a year from what they do. It's just, it's such a great, um, I've said it before, the CAD is okay, the CAM is phenomenal, and I think the CAD is also just me learning. They're also dumping huge amounts of resources into Fusion, which is great. I can talk more about that later. Let's make our part. Oh, what I was going to say is what you do is you sort of look at the screen, and you basically go left to right. You know, you set up, you do your ops, and then you run your simulation, and then you post. So it's an interesting way to think about it. So set up. Now, if you look, it's creating this huge box around our little part because it thinks that the Tormach mill is part of the work piece. So if we change the model to, can I click on that? Yeah, that's all we had to do. And for stock, well, we can do it this way. I've always liked sketching better, but uh, we'll do 10 inches and we'll say five inches, give us some room around it. Set up, we want to choose orientation, Z axis, and you can just click that plane which is great, except the darn thing changed my stock, which I'm not happy about. Depth of Y, 0.5. Oh, that's why. Uh -huh. um, this is 5, and that's 0.5. OK, so that puts us right in the center of the part, which is perfect. Click OK. How would you machine it? Seriously, folks, if you want to get a lot out of this, I would say pause the video now and think about how you're going to make this part. We've got internal areas we've got to machine, and then you need to machine the whole profile of the part. So pause if you want. How I'm going to do it is we're going to take this piece of stock and we're going to put it in a vise and we're going to mill out the end hole that's uh, for the tool and then we're going to mill out that big pocket. Then we'll use that DIY fixture plate that goes right into our vise. Super useful. If you don't have something that fancy, just put a couple holes in a piece of aluminum and use that. That'll let us use the two holes we've already created to clamp the part down and then we can profile all the way around it. Should work, uh, should work pretty well. 2D adaptive clearing tool. For me, it's going to be 31. It's a quarter inch end mill. And we will just click on this. And honestly, that should really all be, well, okay, no stock to leave. I was going to say that's all we have to do, but um, let's click OK. And we don't get a tool path. Usually that's because you're, you've got too much, for me at least, you've got too much uh, ramp in angle. So let's change that to 5 and let's change this to like 0.1 inch. I bet you that'll get us in there. There you go. So what you can see, you can't ramp in and obviously in a wider diameter than the hole that you're machining into. So play with that if you have problems. I'm going to cut it in a couple of depths, multiple depths. We'll just say we'll only go down 0.15. Just like so. Let's hog shear out the uh, shear hog, sorry, the uh, big guy here. So same thing, 2D adaptive clearing. And tool is 158 for me. And we'll click on this. Okay, now that's not good. This is where I was saying we might run into problems because of the split clamp. We are. So let's figure this out. I can't figure out a way to sort of deselect the gap here. So the easiest way to solve this will be go back to model and we'll create a circular sketch and we'll choose this face and then we'll just click here and it'll snap to and then we can choose the select tool, select that ring and say for construction, which you may not even have to do. Um, but that gives us a circle 
Now go back into cam um, and edit this and under chain scroll in here and select our circle and we'll have to choose the bottom now because it won't know. So bottom height, model bottom, stock top, why am I getting an error? I don't know. Hold on, try it again. Sweet. Now let's edit the parameters. We'll do it in no more than 0 0.25, 0 0.26, and I wish you could do uh, even step downs. You can do that in HSM Works. It's a, one of those small nuanced differences. We um, we don't need to leave any stock. What we're going to do is actually cheat in a second and open that pocket up a little more. I think we should be good. Great, we get two passes. I may just reduce the uh, width of cut. Yeah, we'll change it to 0.3 optimal load and I've actually been tweaking my my hog sheer hog recipe I'm gonna go 4,000 and 40 inches a minute we'll do 25 on the ramp in now we'll do 20 and then 2d contour we'll do tool 31 notice that you don't have to go in you can actually just pick the geometry geometry and it automatically figures out that's what you're talking about and we'll do bottom from model bottom click OK but now what we want to do here is we want to actually open this up about a two thou because we're gonna clamp it down with the spindle the tool I'm talking about isn't a crazy crazy precise tool that we're gonna be mounting in this so I'd rather have it be a nice slip fit over there than try to pound the thing on so in the stock to leave no axial but radial will just say negative 0 0.0015 on the radius, so that'll be about 3 thou all the way around. Perfect. Actually, before we go on to the next op, you got to think about how you're going to fixture it and how you're going to find your origin or x, y, z, zero. Now we have that big circle that we've precisely machined out, but I don't want to rely on the center of that um, circle because we're going to have a, probably have a strap clamp through it. So let's use the let's go ahead and machine while the part is in the vise a corner over here that'll make it super easy to indicate it in when we put it on the fixture plate what that reminded me is that i have not yet um, added chamfers to these sharp corners here so let's go back to model and real simple we'll do modify fillet sorry i get fillet and chamfer confused sometimes and we'll just say point to see what that looks like. Yeah, it looks good to me. Now this was tricky to me. We just want to machine a partial 2D contour. So 2D contour, 31's fine for the tool. Now if you click on that contour, you get the whole damn model. That's not what we want. So what you do, this is a little bit weird to me, is you right click and choose contour selections. It doesn't do anything click again and now you get this new mystery hidden window and I'm going to choose open contour and now you can barely tell but we've only got this one selected and that well, we're going to choose that one and then you can click accept current contour except I want to flip it over this way um, and oops I see you know what I selected the wrong one try that again because I, I want this fillet to be counted in there so Okay, we were having a problem. There's, I don't know why, but there's some sort of legacy pre-chamfer geometry in here. So I went back into model and I could actually hover over it and just hit the delete key, delete it. So now we should be good. Cam, generate this stuff to show that it's okay. And now we'll go 2D contour. Tool 31 is fine. Click our line, right click, contour selections, click the line again, open geometry, Click these two, perfect, just like so, perfect. Let's simulate this before we go any further. Click on show stock, play. Cool thing I learned, 
you can actually use the um, scrubber here to drag forward. Hugely useful. But that was one of my gripes was you can't fast render into like the third or fourth or fifth op. But with that scrub bar, you're good. Cleaning that up. And like so. I'll do that in do that in two ops, two depths of cut. Sweet. Let's move over to the fixture plate version. So set up. We will do orientation. Let's Z axis, Z plane, X axis. Let's figure if we can see if we can figure this out. Same thing. Hold on. Let's do model of this thing. And let's stock point. Let's pick origin selected point. Perfect. I was really struggling with that earlier, but uh, talking through some tips at the Fusion class at the Tormach Open House and then some screencasts that folks had sent me were good. Perfect orientation. So remember, we'll have a clamp through here. I'm not going to model it. Uh, we'll get to that when we actually machine it. You'll see. Let's go ahead and actually just uh, bang out our 2D adaptive. Of course, we're going to shear hog this. I love that tool. And we'll select this. And now we might have a problem. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I don't want it to do the uh, interior here, so let's think here. I wonder if figured it out. Model, choose the face, and then go sketch, project. And that's what gave us this purple line around here. And what I did was just delete the two stub lines here, choose the line tool, and create that stop sketch. And now we have this hybrid purple and black line that automatically goes around the part. So 2D adaptive clearing. Let's change our tool to the shear hog. Screw, zoom in. We'll click this line. The problem I was having, which is hilarious, is that it was on the wrong side. So just click this arrow, flips it to the outside, automatically recognizes the stock geometry and creates a 2D adaptive profile toolpath. Just awesome. And then 2D contour. We will do tool 31 as a cleanup tool. Choose that line. Again, watch the red arrow that uh, is on the wrong side. And that should do it all correctly. We can do this one depth cut. Oh, we may have to choose the, the heights, the bottom height, model bottom. We'll go down 8.01, 10,000 past the bottom. That's how we create our CAM tool pass. Want to see us machine it? What tool are we going to put in this thing, the mystery tool? Stay tuned for the Wednesday widget next week, folks. Take care. See you soon.